there's something you and I need to discuss, something regrettable that has happened. For the past number of weeks, there's been no intro to Tutorial Tuesday, and I think it's time that changed. And what better day than today? Because of course, it's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now this week, of course, is no different. We're back with the intro. We're back with the fresh. Thank you for the people who commented saying they missed it. I actually really appreciate that. So we're back in. I missed it as well. And I'm glad we're back. But this week, the weather's not super great. I'm not super enthused about being outside. So instead, we're going to talk about Lightroom. And also, we're going to talk about something very interesting in Lightroom because there's been a big, a big old update. So we're going to dive in. I've got this photo here, and this was taken on the Sony a7 IV. And you might be thinking to yourself, what are we going to talk about today with Lightroom? What are we going to cover that we've not already covered? Well, the big thing for me in this update is how masking works. You might be thinking, oh, that sounds not super interesting. But it basically makes it like working with layers within Lightroom. It's quite similar to Capture One, how that works with its different layer systems. And I think it makes it so much easier to work with local adjustments. So I'm talking about brush, radial filters, graduated filters or gradient filters. I think it makes it so much easier to work with those. So we're gonna look at exactly how this works. There's a bunch of new stuff as well to make it easier to mask stuff out. You know, if you've used auto masking in the past, oh, let me tell you you are gonna enjoy some of this stuff. So let's dive in. We've got this, this is of course the latest version of Lightroom Classic, I've updated it. And we're gonna look with this photo, how we can apply some masking in a really cool way to edit the photo. Now I've done some basic edits to this. Let me show you where we started. So this was the completely raw photo out of the camera. Actually, it's a JPEG, it's not a raw photo, it's a JPEG because at the time of shooting with the a7 IV, the raw codecs weren't codecs? I don't know if that's the right word. The raw kind of files and stuff like that weren't available on Lightroom because it wasn't actually released. So this is this is where we started and this is where I've ended up with just a little bit of an edit and so we're all on the same page. I've taken the highlights down, I've bumped up the shadows, played a little bit with the vibrance, a tiny bit with the tone curve, a little bit with the hues of different colors. I've added some colors into the mid-tones, the shadows, the highlights, stuff like that. Nothing super major, but we've just sort of change the colors a little bit, give it a nice sort of warm feel for that sunset feel. But a lot of the editing here is gonna to need to be done with masking. So instead of having the tools up in the top being the brush, the radial filter, the gradient filter, we now have it all under this new icon, masking. That's because there are a bunch of new options. And when we click that, we can see there are a number of options here. Some are obviously very familiar. The brush, the linear gradient, the radial gradient. We've got the color range, the luminance range as well, which was something we have talked about before, but it's much more prominent now, which is great. This is a way of affecting part of the image based on how bright it is or based on a color, which is super handy to be honest. We can also now select the subject and select the sky, which we're going to come back to in a moment. So let's start off with something familiar. Let's start off by clicking the brush here. This opens up a new box where we've got all of our masks saved. And you can see new mask. If I just start painting on now, it's going to show me where I'm painting the mask in red. We can actually toggle that by pressing O to show where the mask is. And by default now, it resets all the sliders, which is so good because every single tutorial we've been talking about Lightroom like this, whenever we use a mask, I always say double click effect to reset all the sliders. So having that available just automatically saves that little extra bit of time and, and means you don't accidentally make a mistake like that. Now you can see I've painted on here. We've got mask one here. Now I can double click that and I can rename it. I'm going to rename that to foreground darkening. Okay, because we're going to darken the foreground with this mask. Now I can go ahead, I can paint this on. Let's press O so I can see where I'm painting this. I'm going to paint all around here. Of course, I can increase the size of the brush by using the scroll wheel on the mouse. And I'm just going to paint all around the foreground. I'm going to press O to get rid of that. And I'm going to bring the exposure down of this. So I'm really just darkening this foreground a little bit. Now, what I love about how this works, we've got this foreground darkening mask. We can add something to that mask as well. Let's click add here to add to mask. Let's click linear gradient. And we just drag it on like we would have done in the past. But 
that's added into this foreground darkening oh, kind of overall mask where we've now got the brush and the linear gradient. Super, super effective. And we can keep them all nicely kind of organized by naming them. No more do you need to look for the little, the little dot somewhere on the photo and try and find it and then click on it and then go back and edit things. You can just find it all within this new box. Really, really good. And this is why it's like working with layers. We can also turn off individual parts of the mask or the entire mask itself. Now let's go ahead and click new, create new mask. And we're gonna click select sky. Light is gonna work out what the sky is. And once it does, it will have selected that. And you can see it's put it all in red there. Now this is super handy for obviously just affecting the sky, but we don't have to do any work masking it ourselves. Lightroom has done a great job of doing that. And if I press O, I can take off that kind of red filter which shows us what we're looking at. And I can bring the exposure down of just the sky bring the highlights down if I wanted to. We won't go too mad with it. In fact, let's bring the highlights down instead of the exposure. Let's do that. Maybe let's warm it a touch as well by adding some kind of warm tones to it. And this is just affecting the sky. So I'm gonna click here, mask one. I'm gonna double click, I'm gonna call this sky because it's gonna make it nice and easy, right? So now we've got these different masks. We've got them named, so it's super easy to keep it organized. We can go in and turn them on and off individually. We can click on each individual mask to be able to see which masks are inside the overall mask. So we're working essentially with layers here, which is really, really awesome. We can do all kinds of things here. We can select subjects, we can select different things and add radial filters to a certain masks and of course invert them. So let's go ahead and choose a different photo to do some of that stuff too. There really is so much we can do with this. And to be honest, in photos, it's certainly like a portrait photo or something where you might be doing lots of little local adjustments. This is going to make that workflow so much better and so much easier. So. Let's go to a different photo. We've got this one here, again, taken with the Sony a7 IV, which frankly is an awesome camera. I've already done the kind of global adjustments to this photo, but let's go ahead and add the masks in. So we click our masking up here. Let's start off with something I would always do with a portrait, not always, but almost always do with a portrait. Let's select the subject. Now this is new. Usually I would draw a radial circle over the face of the subject and then lighten that a little bit, but now, I can just click select subject. Lightroom's gonna select me here. You can see it has really nicely masked me there. Even these little hairs, that's pretty impressive, I think. So let's go ahead and start editing based on this mask. So we can just immediately start bringing the exposure up of just me here to make me a bit brighter in the frame because ultimately I wanna be the brightest part of the image. I wanna be the brightest part because I'm the subject of the image, right? Uh, any portrait, I tend to try and make my subject the brightest part because that catches the eye. Now, let's double click this and call this subject. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and add contrast. We can do whatever we want here, not a problem. I'm just gonna brighten it for now. We can always come back as well. Let's create a new mask and let's select the subject again. Now, why am I doing that again? Because I actually want to invert this mask and affect everything other than me. So you can see Lightroom has perfectly masked me out there. Now, when we click into this mask, so let's go ahead and click this mask one. We've got subject one here. Let's click these three dots. Let's click invert. Look at that, it's now masking everything other than me. I've got to say as well, these hairs, it is absolutely crazy how well it has masked everything out. So now we can affect everything outside of me. So let's go ahead and bring the exposure down a little bit. You see, as soon as I start doing that as well, it gets rid of the red so we can see what we're actually doing. Just a very nice kind of user experience doing this, which I really, really like. I'm gonna darken everything around me. So I've now brightened me, I've darkened my surroundings. That means that I've actually made myself very much pop in the image and very much the kind of central point of this image. Now let's see how this photo looks before I did anything. This is how it looks originally and where we're up to now. It's quite a big difference, right? There's obviously quite a lot that I've done as a global edit, but this is a pretty big deal. Let's see what it looked like before the masks and then after. Look at that, before and after. It's a pretty big deal. Now you can do that by just clicking this little toggle here on this masks box, which is super, super useful. And there's loads of stuff we could do here. We could go ahead and create new masks. Let's click on linear gradient and let's draw something in a bit like this. We can then move that after the fact as well. So very much like we used to be able to. And let's bring dehaze down a little bit, maybe exposure up and maybe a bit of warmth to sort of simulate a little bit of sunlight coming in. Now I might double click, I might call this sunlight gradient. 
amazing. And now I know everything that I'm doing here. Let's name this one as well. So I'm gonna call this inverse subject because it's everything other than me. So I've got my subject layer, my inverse subject layer, my sunlight gradient. If I click done, I can come back to my global editing. I might lower the brightness, the exposure of the overall photo to make it slightly darker in general because we've brightened certain areas. If we look at before and after, this is where we entirely started and this is where we are now. And without masks, this is where we were and this is where we've gotten to. I think that looks really good, but you can see how powerful this new way of editing is. Select sky, select subject are huge, to be honest, for being able to do certain things. And, and a lot of people, you know, we did a whole tutorial on using radial gradients to brighten your subject. Well, now you don't have to. Now you just click select subject, light and masks it perfectly. And away you go. You're having a great time. Same with the sky. A lot of people will try and actually darken the sky using maybe a brush or a, or a gradient. In fact, let's open another photo and show you another way that we can actually do this. Okay, so let's do something slightly different. Let's go ahead and create a mask based on the brightness of certain areas of the photo. That's something we would have done in the past to affect the sky, which now obviously we have the select sky tool, but if we don't want to use that, let's see how we would do that with the brightness. And there's obviously big benefits to this as well. So for example, it'll affect other parts of the photo that are similarly bright, like reflections. So let's click create new mask here. Let's click luminance range. And then we can affect this in multiple ways. We can go ahead and click somewhere in the image to sample brightness, if you like. We can click and drag to sample an area of brightness to get kind of an average. We can play around with this slider here to see that obviously the left is the darker part, the right is the brighter part. But let's do it the easiest way to begin with. Let's go ahead and go onto the image, and left click an area to sample that brightness. And you can see immediately Lightroom shows us, okay, based on this brightness, this is what's selected. We've got a lot of the sky here, and then we've got a bit of the sea where there's reflection of the sky. Now we can immediately go ahead and start adjusting things. So bringing down the exposure, for example, bringing down the highlights, we could add some warmth to this if we wanted to. There's lots of things we can do here, right? But maybe we don't want to affect the C. Well, we can come in here where we've got mask six. Let's, for the ease of use, rename this. Let's make this luminance sky. We've got the luminance range one here. That's affecting what we just selected. We might want to subtract from this overall mask. Let's use a brush here and we can just paint out the C here. We don't want that to be part of the overall mask. Now, if we turn this on and off, you can see it's only affecting the sky and we can get rid of that subtraction that we've just put in there. So we've got that brush subtraction we can actually turn off the subtraction. So there's a lot we can do here. It's very powerful and very easy to keep, kind of keep track of and have as your workflow, which I really, really appreciate. It's a really nice way of working. I work a lot with local adjustments. I think they're extremely powerful as a way of editing your photo. And I think generally speaking, they are the main way I edit. I do a bit of a global adjustment. I do a bit of this and a bit of that. And then I'll go into the masking, radial filters, gradient filters using the brush and now of course using select subject and select sky super super handy and now having them in these layers makes it so easy to go back and make adjustments and not have to worry so much about keeping track of where all these little dots are on the image which is what you used to have to do and then go and find those click on them and then you could make some adjustments there's lots of little quality of life things as well like the sliders automatically resetting that's a huge deal because it means you're never going to forget and accidentally add a bunch of clarity to something you never meant to do, for example. So I think there's a lot here which I really like. This is a great quality of life workflow kind of update to Lightroom. Big, big fan of it. Of course, I'd love to hear what you think though. Let me know down in the comments. Is this something you do? Do you work a lot with masks in Lightroom? Are you excited about being able to do this? I'd love to know all of that down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Of course, there's a full list of all the kit used for this video, but also the photos and all that kind of stuff. I think all of these are taken on the Sony AZM4, which is pretty cool. All of that's down in the description. I will see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.